Hello ladies and gentlemen, maybe you are already old like myself and have personally played Wing Commander Privateer in the mid 90s and later Freelancer in 2003, created by some bloke named uh, Chris Roberts, whom you never ever heard about later on. And for the fans of a single player PvE open world space game with a main storyline, side quests, arcadey dogfights, some trading and mining thrown in and the ability to buy different ships, this is somehow 18 years later still the freaking gold standard for this kind of genre. Other incarnations like Elite are hardcore simulations with more keybinds to remember than one keyboard holds keys or PvP MMORPGs like EVE Online. And the last time I was really excited to play a spiritual successor that pushed all the right buttons for me, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw somehow messed up the control slash steering system so that I found myself unable to enjoy the game. Everspace 1, on the other hand, had an absolute superior flight control system, gorgeous visuals, fantastic dogfights with interesting tools at your disposal, but was packed in a small scale procedural but repetitive roguelike gaming arc. And I clocked 70 hours into that game, although I'm not a fan of roguelike games at all, the gameplay was just that awesome. Now Rockfish Games promised to take all the good gameplay stuff from part 1 and turn that into a freelancer-like single-player PvE game and I was like, yeah, where do I have to throw my money to make that happen? Now Everspace 2 launched into early access to tease and torture us for at least another year before full release. It comes with a hefty price tag of 37 euro for 10 hour of main story and maybe another 10 to 15 hour of gameplay when you sneak around every corner and grind some gear after hitting the momentary level cap of 14. The main story connects nicely to the events of Everspace 1, but is nothing special so far. But I did found the handful of side quests that I implemented quite enjoyable. It's a PvE arcadey looter shooter that excels at the core gameplay and has stunning visuals. Beside the given quests, the universe is filled with optional random encounters and job boards where you can work your way up through procedural generated missions with different factions. This mix gives a good variety on the core gameplay and does a good job in creating the feeling of scale and somewhat open space, although you really are just flying from one instant zone to another all of the same size. And again, I have to mention the great visuals and the nicely crafted diverse areas here. The loot system and progression layers are also very promising. Loot on high levels feels meaning and impactful, your progress in player level, gain perks, bonus points that you can invest in your spaceship stats and are able to upgrade and alter your ship skills aka devices. In intense dogfights you can use primary and secondary weapons, save devices like an EMP blast, consumables like damage boosters and one different ultimate ability per ship class. The four classes feel all very different and cater to different combat styles. Speaking of ship classes, these are planned to be modular in their appearance and highly customizable, so there is certainly a fair amount of ship pawn available. Did I mention this game looks fantastic? So as you can see so far into this review, this game is a solid 11 out of 10. But from here on, I'm afraid I have to put my fingers onto a few not so fantastic things. Rockfish Games is a small studio that has stated to focus on what they are really able to do rather than try too many different things at once. Remember that bloke from Freelancer whom no one ever heard about? <laughs> yeah, smart move Rockfish, definitely the right decision. But who the hell has thought that implementing agility challenges with your spaceship make a good gameplay layer? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the exploration parts as a nice change of pace in flying through tunnels, mines and old space stations to find stuff, even hidden side quests is perfectly fine. I can also live with powering up stuff and finding batteries, although that becomes tedious very fast. But for the love of God, get rid of finding tiny reflective panels in the vast area to redirect a beam to crack open some stuff. 
It took me boring 10 minutes to find said panel and another annoying 15 minutes flying through that beam to finally open the crack shortly before severely damaging my desk in sheer frustration. And then you have one cool boss battle so far where you can put all your skills and equipment to the test only to find you negate all your skills and equipment by forcing you to grab some debris and literally throw that on the otherwise impenetrable shield of your opponent multiple times. Of course. That is such a ridiculous and stupid idea that it is beyond me why this was even considered to become part of the game. If you want gameplay diversity, redirect your work efforts from puzzles, stupid agility challenges or race gates to give us a proper resource gathering and industrial system. The crafting is useful but bare bones. You click on something and it's just there and you can mine resources by shooting at stuff and uh, oh yeah, your ship's cargo space of your tiny fighter can magically be upgraded so your jet fighter can carry tons of cargo. Of course! Yeah. What about some non-combat vessels like a mining bark with strip lasers to gather certain resources, relying on armor, turrets and drones to defend themselves when suddenly attacked in a mining belt, and then upgrading your home base with things like refineries and automated factories to produce stuff from hard-earned blueprints. I mean, it's not that you have to invent this stuff, just sneak into this other game, uh, Adam Offline or something. Also a trading system, at least at the level of a rebel galaxy, would be nice. What about hiring or owning an unarmed transport vessel to carry your goods from A to B? And you can be the wingman to protect it during the journey. Even in Freelancer there was the constant danger of hostile interceptions during transit from zone to zone. And a protection style gameplay layer would be a nice addition. But I fear these are some corners they have to cut because of the lacking manpower of a smaller studio. And I have to give them credit that I had not one bug or crash during 20 hours of gaming. Now that's a level of polish for an early access game that put other games to shame. Lastly, I have to say that the user interface and the music have as much charm as an unfinished abandoned Excel sheet. Yeah, both. Even the music. So can I recommend this early access game? I give that a clear yes, until you are aware that the content is only about 20 hours at the moment and you have to wait for at least another year before full release. And I honestly hope they don't stick to the idea that agility or race challenges are interesting gameplay layers and the next time someone comes up with the idea of throwing stuff at an enemy spaceship instead of using your mighty and honed war machine, they instead start throwing things at that person so he or she can see just how much fun that is. If they use the next year to give us some reasonable trading, crafting and interesting resource gathering tools and expand the excellent foundation of the loot and progression systems, then this could finally put the longing in my soul for a true freelancer successor to a rest. And let us all finally totally forget about that other bloke I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So that's it for this review. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and subscribe. But most importantly, take good care of yourself and fly safe.